This is going to be Romans chapter 1 verses 8 through 15. And we're going to start in verse 9 first. It says, For God is my witness, whom I serve with my spirit in the gospel of his Son, that without ceasing I make mention of you always in my prayers. Notice he said, For God is my witness. Did you know that God sees everything that you do? You do everything that you do right in the face of God. When we read these verses Paul is writing, we can pick out some things that God should witness us doing on a day-to-day -day basis. To say, God is my witness, means you have a higher authority that can testify for what you are about to say. And Paul said, For God is my witness, whom I serve with my spirit in the gospel of his Son, that without ceasing I make mention of you always in my prayers. All right, now let's look at Romans chapter 1 and verse 8. It says, First, I thank my God through Jesus Christ for you all, that your faith is spoken of throughout the whole world. So God should be able to be a witness of our thankfulness. It is easy to become unthankful for the things God has given us because God says he is kind to the unthankful in Luke 6.35. And people take advantage of God's kindness it is also easy to become unthankful because that is just how the Bible said it would be in the times that we're living in. In 2 Timothy 3 and verse 2, it says men shall be unthankful along with many other sins. It's hard to be thankful for what you have when you see what everyone else has. But 1 Timothy chapter 6 and verse 8 says, And having food and raiment, let us be there with content. If you have food and clothes, you should be content with what you have. That is a hard thing to do when you see everything others have. You should be thankful for the life God has given you and not covet the life of someone else. Why do you think people love the create a player mode or career mode on video games like NBA 2K and Madden? They want the life of a sports star. And the closest they can get to that life is through a video game. Why do people like virtual reality games? They want to be in a, in a more exciting world in life. Why do people want to get these new VR headsets for the PlayStation 4? It's because they want to escape from their world and get into some fantasy land. A Christian wants to leave this present evil world, as Paul calls it, but a man should still be thankful for what God has given him. He should make the best of what he has, live for God, and occupy until he comes. Paul was thankful even though he didn't have much. He was thankful for the Romans, whose faith was spoken of throughout the whole world. Obviously, it wasn't the whole world, but he meant whole as in without distinction and not without exception. He was thankful for his brothers and sisters in Christ that he didn't even know. When you become a Christian, you become appreciative of someone who has mutual faith in Jesus Christ. Notice he wasn't just thankful, but he gave thanks to God for them as well. We shouldn't hesitate to give thanks to God for everything. Philippians 4, 6 says, Be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. Colossians 4.2 says, Continue in prayer and watch in the same with thanksgiving. Colossians 2.7 says, Rooted and built up in him, and established in the faith as ye have been taught, abounding therein with thanksgiving. When is the last time you thank God just for letting you stay alive? Did you know it is the mercy of God that you didn't get ran over by a bus when you were a lost person and went straight to hell? Life is so short and fragile. You could be driving down the road and get hit by a drunk driver. And all it would take is for a truck driver to fall asleep and go into your lane and you would be splattered on the side of the road and in hell if you're not saved. You should be thankful for simple things like God helping you make it to work every day. You should be thankful for God manifesting himself in the flesh and dying on the cross for you. Notice it says in Romans chapter 1 and verse 8, he didn't just say, I thank God, but I thank my God. You should call God your God while praying. God is used to people calling on other gods and worshiping the false gods of today, praying to Mary and millions of other false gods who can't see, hear, or walk. 
He's used to seeing people cut their self for Beyonce and act like a bunch of Baal worshippers. You can give God praise by calling him your God. So God should witness you being thankful in a world where almost everyone is spitting in the face of God, even though he is letting them live and not putting them in hell where they should be. Because we're all wicked sinners, and the only thing that's going to keep us out of hell is the blood of Jesus. Also notice Paul said, I thank my God through Jesus Christ for you all. And that's because Paul was a southerner, so he's always saying things like you all. No, really, Paul was a southerner from the tribe of Benjamin, which is the southern tribe. But because of Jesus Christ, it is possible for us to have fellowship with God and thank God for everything. Jesus Christ is not only our Savior, He's also our, our mediator, and the reason we can go right in the throne room and talk to God. 1 Timothy 2.5 says, For there is one God and one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus. We don't have to go confess our sins to somebody else, or talk to God through somebody else. Our mediator is Jesus Christ. Hebrews 10.19, Having therefore, brethren, boldness to enter into the holiest by the blood of Jesus. So God witnessed Paul being thankful. He witnessed him giving praise by calling him his God. Paul also lets us know it is only through Jesus Christ that he can do what he does. He was thankful for the faith of the Romans that was so well known and one of the things that made him desire to go there. So God should witness our faith and he should witness our thankfulness. And Romans 1 9 says, For God is my witness, whom I serve with my spirit and the gospel of his Son, that without ceasing I make mention of you always in my prayers. So God should be able to be a witness of us serving him through the gospel. The verse said, Whom I serve with my spirit and the gospel of his Son. Notice Paul letting you know he believes in the deity of Jesus Christ by calling Jesus Christ God's Son. The Bible says in the book of John that when Jesus called himself the Son of God, he was making himself equal with God. Paul said, whom I serve with my spirit. This was Paul's human spirit. Paul served with his spirit in the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Paul was always doing service for God and preaching the gospel. The gospel of the death, burial, and resurrection was revealed to Paul, and he wrote it in 1 Corinthians 15, 1-4. You should have that gospel memorized. If we put a lot of time and effort spreading the gospel, we're going to rack up at the judgment seat of Christ. People that don't give out the gospel and just think, well, I'm saved, I'm going to heaven, who cares about anybody else? They're going to be really ashamed when they get to the judgment seat of Christ. The Bible talks about the terror that's going to be at the judgment seat of Christ. It's not going to be fun standing in front of Jesus Christ and giving account for our lack of service. And this is how Paul felt about the gospel he preached. It says in 1 Corinthians 1.17, For Christ sent me not to baptize but to preach the gospel, not with wisdom of words, lest the cross of Christ should be made of none effect. 1 Corinthians 9.16 For though I preach the gospel, I have nothing to glory of, for necessity is laid upon me. Yea, woe is unto me if I preach not the gospel. And then in verse 15 in Romans chapter 1, Paul says, I am ready to preach the gospel to you that are at Rome also. You can serve God as well by passing out tracts, going door to door, witnessing with your Bible, and leaving the gospel everywhere you go. You say, well, I have to work too much. You can witness to people at work. There are bumper stickers you can put on your car to tell people about Jesus Christ. If you are still alive, then God still isn't through with you. And he has a purpose for you to be doing something for him while you're down here. If you can't get out and talk to people, then you can call people on the phone or simply send someone an email or Facebook message with the gospel. So Romans 1, 9, For God is my witness, whom I serve with my spirit and the gospel of his Son, that without ceasing I make mention of you always in my prayers. God is witness of Paul making mention of the Romans without ceasing in his prayers. God saw Paul on his knees praying for them, and he would testify to it. 
This gives us some more good instruction for prayer, praying without ceasing, which doesn't mean every second, but constantly throughout the day. Another good instruction is to make mention of others, even if you are only mentioning their name. He should also witness us making requests. Romans 1.10 says, Making request, if by any means now at length I might have a pro prosperous journey by the will of God to come unto you. Paul was making request to have a prosperous journey to come to see the Romans. The Bible talks a lot about us making requests to God. In Philippians 1.4 it says, Always in every prayer of mine for you all making request with joy. Job 6, 8 says, Oh, that I might have my request, and that God would grant me the thing that I long for. Philippians 4, 6, Be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving let your requests be made known unto God. God wants us to ask Him for things. If you ask with the right motive and ask God if it is His will for you, then you are more likely to get your prayer answered. Paul said, By the will of God. So he placed God's plan for his life before his own. If, if you pray and say, if this is in your will, you're, pl you're placing God's plan for you above your own plan. When you get to the judgment seat of Christ, is God going to be able to say you made some requests with the right motive? And if you read the book of James, it says in James 4, 2 and 3, Ye lust and have not, ye kill and desire to have and cannot obtain, ye fight and war, yet ye have not, because ye ask not. So one of the reasons you're not getting any prayers answered or any of your requests fulfilled is because you're simply not asking for anything. God wants us to ask for stuff, and that is why he says things about making requests. And in James 4, 3 says, Ye ask and receive not, because ye ask amiss, that ye may consume it upon your lusts. So hindrance to you not getting your request is asking with the wrong motive and asking and not asking. If you don't ask at all, then you may never get it even though God wanted you to have it. So let God be a witness to you making requests to him. And let God be a witness of you establishing others in the faith. Romans 1, 11 and 12 says, For I long to see you that I may impart unto you some spiritual gift to the end you may be established. That is, that I may be comforted together with you by the mutual faith, both of you and me. And Acts 16 and verse 5 says, And so were the churches established in the faith and increased in number daily. When it says spiritual gift in verse 11, it isn't talking about the apostolic gifts. These were signs the apostles had to show unbelieving Jews that they had some credibility and that they could believe the apostles. That is why in Mark 16, 20 it says, Confirming the word with signs following. The Bible says the Jews require a sign in 1 Corinthians 1, 22. And the Bible says, Tongues are for a sign, not to them that believe, but to them that believe not in 1 Corinthians 14, 22. So the sign gifts were to show unbelieving Jews that the apostles were the real thing. The sign gifts went out when God quit dealing with the Jews and began to deal with the Gentiles because it is the Jews that require a sign. But the signs come back in the future time of Jacob's trouble when God still starts dealing with the Jews again. That is why you'll see guys like Moses and Elijah with the sign gifts. But Paul wanted to establish the Romans in the same faith as he had that is why it says mutual faith in Romans 1.12. If a Christian doesn't get established in the faith, then he will be deceived into believing false doctrine. Ephesians 4.12 says, For the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. He wanted to perfect and edify the Romans. Notice verse 11 said, For I long to see you. Paul had a love for the brethren and wanted to see them. 1 John 3.14 says, We know that we have passed from death unto life because we love the brethren. He that loveth not his brother abideth in death. Paul had a love for the brethren, and the sign that you're saved and have passed from death unto life is that you love other Christians. Paul loved the Romans and wanted to travel there to establish them in the faith more. Their faith was spoken of throughout the whole world, and he still wanted to make it better. But just like Paul... You should want to be around other Christians and fellowship with them. 
even though it may be hard to find Bible-believing Christians that care about the King James Bible and have any cares or worries about people correcting the Bible, and it's hard to find people that have any interest in Bible doctrine, but you should still want to be around other Christians and help other Christians. He says he wants to be comforted together with them. He would probably establish them in the doctrine of the rapture, as it talks about in 1 Thessalonians 4. 1 Thessalonians 4 are comforting words for a Christian. And that's why it says in 1 Thessalonians 4.18, Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. Notice also he said, comforted together with you. Paul didn't think highly of himself, so he knew he would get comfort from them as well. And Romans 1.13 says, Now I would not have you ignorant, brethren, that oftentimes I purposed to come unto you, but was let hitherto that I might have some fruit among you also, even as among other Gentiles. And Paul isn't using the word ignorant like we use it today. When we see someone stupid, we say he's ignorant, but he, Paul isn't meaning it like that. And notice it said, but was let hitherto. The word let means hindered. Paul wanted to do some things, but oftentimes he was hindered. Paul wanted to come so he could have some fruit among them. Notice it says that I may have some fruit among you also. The Bible says you know them by their fruits, referring to false prophets. And you can tell a false prophet not just by his works, but by the fruit of his lips. Hebrews 13, 15 says, By him therefore let us offer the sacrifice of praise to God continually, that is the fruit of our lips, giving thanks to his name. False prophets are positive, just like Satan was in Genesis 3, and Paul was negative, so you can tell that Paul isn't a false prophet. Most of the first chapter of Romans is considered hate speech to most people today. You can tell by the fruit of Paul's lips when he preaches that he wasn't a false prophet. But Paul wanted to go to Rome and have fruit among them. He wanted to establish them in the faith and comfort them. And he would bring the fruits of the Spirit. Galatians 5.22 But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. And lastly, let God be a witness of you feeling in debt to the lost. Do you ever feel like you owe it to lost people to tell them they are going to hell? You owe it to God for saving you to tell lost people how to be saved. Paul said he was debtor to the Greeks, barbarians, and Romans. 1 Corinthians 9.16 says, For though I preach the gospel, I have nothing to glory of, for necessity is laid upon me. Yea, woe is unto me if I preach not the gospel. 1 Corinthians 9.17, For if I do this thing willingly, I have a reward, but if against my will a dispensation of the gospel is committed unto me. Paul said a necessity is laid upon him, and woe is unto him if he doesn't preach the gospel. Romans 1, 14 through 15 says, I am debtor both to the Greeks and to the barbarians, both to the wise and to the unwise, so as much as in me is, I am ready to preach the gospel to you at Rome also. So Paul felt like he was in debt both to the Greeks and to the barbarians, both to the wise and to the unwise. And a, a barbarian in this context is not an uncivilized person, but rather a non-Greek or non-Roman alien or foreigner. Look how it is used in 1 Corinthians 14.11. It says, Therefore, if I know not the meaning of the voice, I shall be unto him that speaketh a barbarian, and he that speaketh shall be a barbarian unto me. So this isn't a barbarian in the sense of an uncivilized person, but a barbarian in the sense of a foreigner who isn't a Greek or Roman. And now back at Romans 1.14, I am debtor both to the Greeks and to the barbarians, both to the wise and to the unwise. So as much as in me is, I am ready to preach the gospel to you that are at Rome also. So God should be a witness of us trying to reach the lost and preach the gospel, and he will be able to testify to it when we get to the judgment seat of Christ. But this has been Romans chapter 1 verses 8 through 15.